first potential exoplanet or a planet orbiting around another star has been found in another galaxy. While NASA is aiming for a first launch of Artemis, its mission to return to the moon in mid-February now, that's the latest timeline. Let's get the latest Space News of the Week. Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, joins us. So, Brad, tell us, tell us about this uh, exoplanet. When we talk about a galaxy, how far, far away was it? So this was in a galaxy called Messier 51, so it's 28 million light years away. So it's, you know, relatively far, uh, even on the scale of astronomy, because most of the planets that we found, and we've talked about quite a bit about them, have all been in our own galaxy relatively nearby within a few thousand light years of Earth. So our Milky Way is about 100,000 light years across. And so this whole other galaxy is 28 million light years away. So this is a really far away object. So it's quite amazing that they think they've detected it uh, and that when they do some analysis and what they think uh, this planet could be, ends up being about a planet twice the size of Saturn, but really far away from its star. So far that every year would take 70 Earth years just to get around that star. Okay, so... All right, far away. I guess that's that's the sort of synopsis I'm going to take from that. I wanted <laughs> well, to talk like, about. It, yeah, sorry, go you go. No, so no, say, no I mean, go. it's 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 important just to know that now other galaxies potentially have them because the question's always been: mm. Is our galaxy unique, or do all these galaxies have planets? And then that number becomes so much higher. You know, trillions and trillions of planets. That that question of is there life or other Earths obviously becomes an important one and a bigger number now to think about. Oh, it's out there. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. we'll see it one day. Maybe not in our lifetimes, Brad. We'll see. But um, NASA uh, is adamant that Artemis, this mission to the moon, will happen in February. This is already way behind schedule. Talk to us about this milestone while they are confident. Stacking, it's called. Yeah, look, the, the stacking is a critical part because this rocket is multiple parts really put together. You have the rocket engine, um, which is the fuel that takes you up. And as you're seeing being lifted in position, you have the capsule, what's called the Orion capsule. And that's where the humans will go in. And all of these parts have been built separately. So to put them together, they've been tested individually, but you want to make sure, you know, everything fits, everything works, everything's in the right way before well, launch. It fits Should... together. So, so what, this could have been that they went, ah, oh, it's not quite fitting. We'll have to make the whole thing again. What, what happens if it didn't fit? Well, it's what we call an integration test. You want to make sure everything works seamlessly, that there's not a small leak, uh, that, you know, the seals and everything like that fit perfectly. And and this has happened before, that some components haven't been flush or as perfect as they wanted to be. And it has required re-engineering or rebuilt, which has pushed the timeline back. And that's one of the reasons why this is delayed, is some of the work into the rocket engine, they call it Space Launch System, has had some of those issues causing the delay for the launch. So the fact that it is all coming together is a big sign they don't have to do any more work towards it and that this idea of a February launch is probably really realistic, you know, modulo a few days with weather or things like that. All right. Just finally, there could be another space station going up there, but a private one, I guess this is just the next step of, uh, the, you know, private companies getting out there into space, Brad? It is. And look, this is quite interesting for two reasons. You know, we've talked a bit about how the International Space Station is getting old. Uh, the contract only is through 2024. Now, NASA said they're happy to pay their share till 2028, but the Russians haven't said that. Uh, so what's going to happen with the future of the International Space Station? And then you have the added issue. Private companies want in on this as well. So Blue Origin has partnered with Boeing and another company, Sierra Nevada, to say they're going to build their own space station. Uh, by the end of the decade. And it's not dramatically hard to think about you could do this. We've seen China assembling their space station as we speak. Uh, and so this would allow private companies to dictate the terms. So it could be for holiday. It could be private astronauts. It could be other countries who don't part in their participate mm. in the International Space Station having a seat or, or contracts to NASA. So just looking at this, every time I see the space station, the real one, it's very cramped and cluttered and chaotic. This one looks beautiful. It's uh, smooth, sleek designs <laughs> and plenty of space. Is this like the off the plan before you buy the real apartment? Yeah, look, this is, a, this is the high gloss image with the wide camera and the nice lighting. When you get in there, it won't look as sleek. But 
it will be newer, and that's going to have the benefit. The space station right. currently is 30-something years old, so already that's going to be an improvement. Yeah. Uh, if, if nothing else, what we've learned is space travel, space time is not all that glamorous. Brad Tucker, thanks for your time. We'll talk again soon. Take care.